kid. As you guys can tell from the title of this video, there's something wrong with my car. I hate to make sad videos and shit, but like, my car is broken. I get memed on, the last meme that was made was Mickey on his Instagram was like, get Calvin to sell his 240 to me. There's a reason why I'm not driving my car around. The first reason is the main point of this video. My exhaust is way too low. Not because my height is too low, but my wheels and my coilovers being a, the certain setup it is, my exhaust scrapes on everything. And you know me, I was the first one to get bags on this channel and everyone is, was a skeptic, especially G TJ. And going to static from bags is not a good meme. It's a terrible meme. I don't want to deal with it. So the next lineup of things that are going to happen is today I'm going to fix my exhaust, put it back on, tie up some loose ends, make the car inhabitable. I have some um, three point seat. I have some three point seat belts that I want to put in and make it so that I don't have to do the two step method because the automatic seat belts don't work anymore after we put the SR20 in. So goal today: exhaust goes back in, seat belts go in, and the goal for next time is to get the five lug swap so that I can put those Kaze wheels that have been collecting dust on that shelf, on the car, so that I could drive it around at a comfortable height and not scrape on TJ's driveway. So the story goes, I'm driving from my house to the workshop and I hear the dreaded bolt hitting the floor and driving past it. I hear a dink dink and I was like, I'm looking in my side view mirror like trying to, what was that? And the next thing I hear is, my exhaust pipe, which is currently sitting in my passenger seat, scraping on the floor. I'm like 10 minutes away from my house and 10 minutes away from the warehouse. So I had to make a decision whether to just take it to the warehouse or not. And every time you, I hit a bump, I would hear it. And I was like, I'm driving it home. Let's hope to Benedict. There are no cops trying to follow me home. Like. My car was making all the exhaust missing noises and the scraping exhaust noises. Just like, it's just all not good. So the next step is I need to go to the hardware store and figure out what this thing is and the corresponding nuts to go with it. I don't know about you guys, but hardware stores are my, my favorite stores. Just seeing the little bits of like potential R&D you could come up with. Seeing as there's not that much room in here, it's gonna be kind of difficult to show you what I'm trying to do. It's, but so far, it's pretty simple. You take your studs and put them in there, and now you have a suitable marriage point for your exhaust. I don't know how I'm gonna portray this or showcase this, but I'm gonna just do my best to leave it on the floor and hope you guys can see what's going on. Best of luck to you all. I'm beginning to realize why TJ likes exhaust mods so much. It's like so easy to do and it makes your car louder and it, it gives your car some presence. Like, and it's so easy. I just went under there, took a couple of bolts out, put a couple of bolts in, super easy mod. You just need a couple wrenches and some patience and a jack. Like, good on you, Teach. Good on you for picking this as your number one choice. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's on the podcast. Check it out. No new upload, but you know, whatever. When we move into the shop, we'll get everything running and all those good memes. I haven't seen anyone on YouTube that makes a comprehensive guide on how to do this. There's a lot of write-ups, and that's what I'm using as reference to do this. There's a really good write-up. I don't know the, the top of my head, but if you look it up, it's probably the first link. It tells you what to buy and how to do it with pictures. But here, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it on video. I'm gonna try and do my best and make this as detailed, but as simple as possible. 10 millimeter clip. And then you pry back here. Always use plastic pry tools when trying to remove interior panels. Oh my goodness. Just to warn you guys, that took quite a bit of force. So don't be afraid to not like yeet and send it, but like uh, and pull it. You know what I mean. Also, another thing is you don't, you can't remove this panel at all. It's fixed 
with the seat over here, so all you really need is just space to get inside. Uncover the two Phillips heads here and then pull this whole panel out. Same deal. Plastic pry tool, then send it. But don't send it, because you don't want to hurt your car. But send it, you know? You remove this guy. All it is is clipped into here along the same axis. You just gotta give her a good pull this way. Good luck everybody, this one is scary. Oh, I broke that one. Rip. That one's broke. Be careful, everybody. Literally, I just said to be careful, and that is not a fucking... It's not supposed to do that. I just sent it, and this is the result. Do not full send. Do not do that. It's a bad, it's a bad time. Don't do it. It's all right. Rip. I'll find another piece. I don't even like the blue anyway. I wish it were black. Finally, the part where you remove the whole automatic assembly. I'm gonna point out all the bolts and then do it because it's kind of hard. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm gonna point out and explain exactly what you need to do before I do it so that you guys see what it looks like. I won't be able to show you because doing, doing it while filming is kind of difficult. Starting from the front, you got a bolt right here, 10 milli, and the clip detaches from here and not here. One, two, three 10 mils and then it exposes the 10 mils behind it after you remove these three one two and then three it'll expose one and two more 10 mil bolts then there's a 14 mil bolt do not lose that and make sure that you loctite it i will remind you again because that is the life bolt that keeps you from dying then you peel back this whole apparatus you peel back your quarter panel and it exposes the motor mechanism. There's a clip right here for the connector. One, two, 10 mil bolts, and then at the bottom, which I can't really show, is a 14 mil bolt. You're gonna remove all of those things and it should just pop out. Day two. Day number two. I stopped filming yesterday because I was super tilted. I really, I did, I'm gonna I'm be real right now. I was really tilted, I was so mad because I ran into an issue where this, the seatbelts locked themselves. What's happening is called reverse lock. I looked it up and my seatbelt wouldn't retract. So I don't understand completely how to do it. I would implore you guys to go out and look up how to undo reverse lock on seatbelts if you ever run into this issue. But I was able to fix it on this side and now I get to show you how to do it. I don't even remember what step I was on. I believe step number six. Let's see. Step number six. I took out all the things. I did all the other things. Now it's time to put the things back. Oh, I remember what we needed to do. Here we go. I wanted to avoid this, but it's unavoidable. If you guys can figure it out better than me, then by all means. Step six is to remove the old seatbelt, whatchamacallit, right? Because you need to put the new seatbelt in its place, which requires removal of your chair. Four bolts, simple, two in the back, two in the front, and two bolts in here, and this comes out. You see this? It used to be not like this, okay? It's simple. When you try to put it into the car, there's a mounting hole at the bottom, and that hole, the very bottom of that hole, does not fit where it needs to fit when you put this bolt in. I just cut out a fork. It's only there to keep it from shifting side to side. The bottom bolt is your Jesus bolt. That'll keep you alive. I'm gonna go ahead and install this. It's too tight of a space, so I can't show you. I'll just point out where, well, since you already took out the other thing, the automatic part, it goes in the exact same place. You just stick the big bulky end into the big hole and bolt it in. Very simple, not that hard. If you could take it out, you could put it back in. At this point, the seatbelt should be in in both places, here and in there. The next spot is the B-pillar mounting bracket. So you need to put it in that hole. The problem is when you convert this car is the panels don't have provisions for the B-pillar bolt. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna take your whatchamacallit and drill a hole into it. Like I did on that side. That, it will fuck it, it won't, it won't show you. But this, 
is going to require a little bit of modification and we're all about lay mods here on the hoser boy channel and look at that just just a good hole oh look right into the so good just a good hole mm. Mm. just a good hole would you look at that now you have a brand new beautiful manual seat belt none of that Bunk shit, automatic seatbelt. Quality of life mods. One last thing to get rid of so that I can drive this car more comfortably. You're just gonna have to wait another day for that to happen. The last step <coughs> for this install is to put everything back. I'm not gonna bore you with that, so I'm gonna end the video here today. Thank you all so much for watching and not gonna do that. Well, that's what happens when I leave Calvin with a camera and let him film everything. I think next time I need to tell him to film more of what you're doing. I noticed he filmed a lot of just him talking and explaining what he did, but he didn't ever show what he did. Anyways, tomorrow we'll be back on schedule. I used this video that was filmed a week and a half ago to be the vlog to go up while we're traveling to round three. I'll see you guys there. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out, because he didn't do it, and keep moving forward. And I'm feeling